Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the two RPK light machine guns from Battlefield 4. Uh, I was very interested to see what the strengths and weaknesses of both of these guns were and why you would want to use one over the other, uh, but just after a couple hours of playtime, testing them out and using both of them and, and taking a look at their stats, it became quickly apparent that one is significantly better than the other, almost to the point where you would never want to use one over the other. And, and we'll get into that here in a second. And so to start things off, they both have a very slow rounds per minute. They both clock in at 600 RPM. And so this basically solidifies the role as long range light machine guns. You can use these up close and personal. They will sometimes get the job done. But you, if you go against someone who knows what they're doing and they have a reasonably high rounds per minute weapon, or they're using something like the FAMAS or the AEK, you're just simply not going to win those firefights. And so you're, you're going to want to play the medium and long game when you're using both of the RPKs. Uh, as for their damage model, it's pretty standard. They're both going to do 25 damage per shot up close, and then that's going to drop off to 18 at long range. Uh, but where we start to see a little bit of deviation is when we take a look at their recoil patterns. Uh, the RPK-74M has a vertical of 0.28, which is very, very low, and then a left kick of 0.25 and a right of 0.25. Two, but the RPK-12 has even better recoil numbers. Its vertical is only 0.3, which is a little bit higher, uh, higher than the 74M, but it's pretty much non-existent. You're never going to notice the difference. But its left kick is only 0.15, and its right is 0.1. These, both of these weapons have almost no recoil at all, but the RPK-12 has none. Like, it is crazy. This weapon is a laser beam, and it basically, once again, just solidifies the role as long-range weapons. And so if you're able to take advantage of its recoil, which is very easy, or you're just someone who doesn't want to deal with recoil at all, and you don't mind playing at a distance, the RPKs are phenomenal weapons. Like, when I was playing on Rush, or I knew was I was playing on maps with long-range engagements, I was dominating people at a distance and it's simply because they have almost no recoil they have a slow rounds per minute so it becomes very manageable and you can just dominate people at those distances uh, the 74m does win out in the the first shot recoil numbers though it's got a first shot of 0.75 while the rpk12 has a 1.6 first shot and so while that is a significant difference there I honestly didn't notice a, a huge difference when I was actually performing on the battlefield because while you can tap fire a little bit better with the 74M version, because the recoil or the, the when you're holding down the trigger is so small, I didn't think that it was really required that I needed to tap fire all that often with these weapons. I mean, sure, if someone was way out there, then I would tap fire and uh, the 74M would be a little bit better for those engagements. But for the most part, just because the recoil patterns already are amazing, I didn't think that having a little less uh, first shot recoil was all that much of advantage when comparing uh, when compared to the RPK-12. Uh, but where we start to see a huge difference between both of the weapons is when we start to take a look at their magazine size. The RPK-12 has 61 rounds in its mag, while the 74M only has 46 rounds. And so you would think to yourself, okay, the RPK-12 has more rounds in its mag, which probably means that it has a slower reload speed, just to kind of balance things out. But that's not the case at all. The RPK-12 has a short reload time of 2.4 seconds, which is very, very fast, and then a long reload time of 3.5 seconds. Uh, as for the 74M, it has a short of 3.6 seconds, while the long reload time is going to take you a staggering 4.5 seconds to go through the entire animation. So the short reload time of the 74M is the long of the RPK-12. That is a huge difference and so I honestly after looking at all of the stats and using the weapons themselves while the RPK 74M does have a better first shot recoil all of the other stats are in favor of the RPK-12, and so when using them and looking at the stats, I honestly can never, at least not in good conscience, recommend using the RPK-74M over the RPK-12. Like, there is literally no reason why you would ever want to use it. It's got a faster reload time, it has more rounds in its magazine, it's got an amazing recoil pattern, there's just... There's just no reason to use it over the other one. And so that is the reason why I've, I've always been puzzled 
why the RPK-74M was introduced. It looks very cool. Both of these weapons look very unique, and if you want to use one over the other, it's probably not going to make a huge difference. You can still do well with both. I went on incredible kill streaks with uh, both of these guns, but at least looking at their stats and then playing with them, the RPK-12, at least in my opinion, is the clear winner. Uh, and so if you want to use both of these weapons, I highly recommend you play on maps where you know you're going to have a lot of long range combat. And honestly, I was having a lot of success when I was playing on defensive rush because you know where the enemy is going to be coming from. You can put yourself into a position where you can lock down long corridors, you can lock down or you know there's going to be a lot of uh, long range engagements. And because everyone's pretty much coming from one angle, you're not going to have a whole lot of surprises. People aren't just going to whip around at the at the last second around the corner catching you by surprise. And while that still does happen on Rush, because you know where the action's coming from, it doesn't happen as often if you're playing on like something like Domination or Conquest. And so I would highly recommend playing this on Rush. I found them to be phenomenal. But even if you just want to play them on Domination or Conquest, play on maps where you know you can take advantage of its low recoil and slow rounds per minute. You're, you're probably not going to want to play on on Operation Locker or on Flood Zone, you can still do well, don't get me wrong, I had some luck on those, you're just going to have to play very conservatively on those maps. Uh, as for tricking out the RPKs, there are a couple things that you can do to slightly improve their performance, but honestly, they already have amazing accuracy, and because the customization options on these weapons don't benefit anything other than the accuracy themselves, there isn't a whole lot you can do to boost them and make them the god guns in the game. There are some things that you can do, but it's not as crazy as something like the higher rate of fire weapons. And so for the first slot, the scope, it always comes down to personal preference. I was having a lot of fun with the red dot sight and the, the holographic scopes. I find those just to be fantastic. But if you want to use something like the ACOG scope or the higher optics, go for it. These are long range weapons and that is exactly what they're made for. Uh, the accessory slot, I would say pretty much go whatever you're comfortable with. I know a lot of people like to use the magnifier because it makes them a little bit more effective at long range. I've never really been a huge fan of the magnifier. It just never tickled my fancy, so I usually just slap on the laser sight or nothing at all. Uh, laser sight, it's not going to give you a whole lot of benefit. It may help you out in some panic scenarios, but if you're playing up close and you're having to hit fire with the RPK, you've probably died at that point. I mean, there are some instances where you will come out of it alive, but honestly, once again, you're not going to want to use this up close and personal. Uh, the, the barrel attachments, you would think... There would be a whole lot of customization options here to try to improve the RPKs, but honestly, there isn't a whole lot you can do here. And I was having a lot of success with just running with a, a no barrel attachment at all. Uh, some people may say that, you know, you can try using the muzzle brake or the compensator, but because they already have phenomenal vertical and horizontal recoils, like these weapons are laser beams, there isn't really any reason to use those two attachments. And because they do come with some baggage, they have a negative aspect to it where it increases your bullet deviation for sustained fire. I honestly think that both the muzzle brake and the compensator are a waste for this slot, and they're actually gonna probably uh, hamper this weapon. Uh, you could try out the heavy barrel attachment. It is going to increase your long range accuracy, but at the same time, it does increase your, your recoil by 50%, and 50% is pretty substantial, even on a weapon that already doesn't have a lot. And so I personally stray away from the heavy barrel. I know some people swear by it, especially when you're using it on one of these weapons that has a very low recoil to, be to begin with, but I've just never been a fan of that attachment. But if you're looking for a little bit more long range killing potential, I would try that out. Uh, and then for the final slot, I would highly recommend trying out the Ergo Grip. It's going to increase your hip fire accuracy, but also your aim down sight accuracy by 50% when on the move. And I know some of you out there might be thinking and scratching your head right now, this attachment is usually associated with running and gunning, using a high rate of fire weapon, getting up close and personal, and hip firing your target down. But because it also increases your accuracy when you're on the move, because this is a light machine gun, and there are a lot of instances where you can't be standing still and you want to be moving and shooting at the same time, this is perfect for the RPK. Normally when you want to take out a target and you want to have pinpoint-like accuracy, you should be standing still. Once you start to 
to move, you're going to have more bullet deviation. Your bullets are going to be flying all over the place. And so if you're someone like me who likes to move around a lot when aiming down sight and taking shots at your target, the ergo grip is just simply fantastic. You can also try slapping on the angled or the stubby grips. But honestly, I feel like they're a little redundant. They're already amazingly accurate weapons, and maybe if you want to reduce that first shot recoil on the RPK-12 to put it more in line with the 74M version, you can do that. I, I just find that because they already have such amazing uh, recoil patterns, they're extremely accurate, I find those to be a little redundant, and so at least for me, I think that the Ergo Grip is the best pick here. Uh, and so overall, both of these weapons are fantastic long-range light machine guns, but after using them for a while and looking at the stats themselves, in my humble opinion, the RPK-12 is the clear winner here. It's got more rounds than its magazine, it's got a f way faster reload time, all the other stats are basically identical, and so as long as you don't mind dealing with slightly more first shot recoil, then I would just stick with the RPK-12. Uh, but that is about it for today's review of the RPKs in Battlefield 4. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think of both of these weapons. Do you love them? Do you hate them? I know some people completely avoid them like the plague, but others find them to be one of the best weapons in the game. Let me know down below in the comment section. Uh, but until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.